So we've talked about group one and group two elements. So we're talking about the representative metals. So group one and group two elements in Lewis structures. Then we skip over here to group three and group four. So now let's look at group five. So what happens if I have a group five as a central atom? So let's look at an example. Let's look at NH3. So NH3. So which of these elements, nitrogen or hydrogen, should be my central atom? Well, whichever element's closer to carbon will be our central atom. So nitrogen closer to carbon, nitrogen goes in the center. So I'm going to put nitrogen here in the center, and then I'm going to distribute the hydrogens uh, around it. So I'm going to just go ahead and start off by distributing them and thinking Vesper theory tells me they're going to go as far apart as possible. So Vesper, valence shell, electron pair repulsion theory, tells me that the electron clouds of each of these atoms, the hydrogen atoms, have electron clouds that repel each other and will push the elements as far apart as possible. So Vesper theory. So I'm going to predict that this is what's going to happen. Okay, so let's figure out how many electrons we have to work with and uh, get making some bonds. So Here's nitrogen. Nitrogen has five. So five, if I figure that out, I go one, two, three, four, five. So nitrogen has five valence electrons, and there's only one of them in my compound. Hydrogen has one electron. See, hydrogen, one electron. And I, I've got three of them. So that means I have eight electrons that need homes. So we'll go ahead and first start by assigning electrons to bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a second, that's different. So I have six electrons assigned and all of my bonds are made. Um, so none of these hydrogen uh, atoms wants more than two electrons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put boom, boom, a lone pair on my nitrogen atom. So this isn't, this mustn't be what it actually looks like. Maybe it looks more like this, where I have the lone pair occupying a spot and, uh, and then the hydrogens um, occupying the other corners. So that would, let's check and see if this works. We've got two, four, six, eight. All of the electrons have been uh, assigned to an atom. And let's check if nitrogen has its full valence shell. Two, four, six, eight. So nitrogen's happy, all the hydrogens are happy. Um, so let's look at some of our questions that we were answering uh, about this. So the first thing we said is let's draw the Lewis structure. So Lewis structure A, we think it looks like this, this Lewis structure. And then let's look at the bonds. What kind of a bond type do we have going on here? So bond type, bond type. Well, this is a nitrogen-hydrogen bond. So that is a non-metal-non-metal uh, non -metal bond. So I have a polar covalent bond because it's non-metal, non-metal, and they're, they're different, so they do not equally share their electrons. Nitrogen is more electronegative. Then we said symmetry. Ooh. Symmetry. What does this thing actually look like? Well, let's, let's build it. I have a nitrogen in the middle, and then, um, okay, so here's my, here's my nitrogen. And then I've got three hydrogens stuck to it. So let's look at, here's my nitrogen guy. And I got one, one and then two. Here's two. That doesn't feel like it's gonna fall out. Two. And then I need one more bond. There we go. And three. Well, does it, does it look like this? Well, I've got three bonds, and I've got three bonds here, but what am I missing? Well, I'm missing that fact that the valence Vesper theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion, said that that lone pair on nitrogen, it matters. So it's, it's not this trigonal planar. I have to take into account that there is a pair of electrons up here pushing, repelling these down. So what I actually get... What I actually get is better represented like this. So we'll put this nitrogen in the center. So we'll pretend like this is my nitrogen and then I'm gonna stick these yellow ones on here like 
they were hydrogen atoms. Here, now notice, notice here how the molecule is bent. It's being pushed down. So I'm actually going to take uh, one of these sticks to indicate this is the lone pair. So the lone pair is pushing and repelling those three hydrogens down. So we don't call this um, trigonal planar like we did when we, everything was in one plane. Uh, we actually call this shape uh, trigonal pyramid, pyramidal. So it, it looks like a pyramid and it's a triangle. Okay, so is it symmetrical though? Well, no, no, it's not. See, look, is it symmetrical now? No. Is it symmetrical now? No. I can't cut a line through here to get a perfect um, representation of all this. So symmetry? Nope. No symmetry. So then substance type? Well, no symmetry. It has polar covalent bonds. It's not symmetrical. Therefore, it is a polar covalent substance. And uh, shape, let's look at shape. Well, we call this trigonal. Pyramidal, trigonal pyramidal. Um, so this is, yeah. So if you run into elements like nitrogen, uh, first off, just start by assigning so guess, guess what you think the shape should be. So, you know, we did that up here. We thought maybe this is what it looks like. After we identified that there's a lone pair, then we thought this probably is not what it actually looks like. Let's redraw it. And then after we redrew it, we thought this is two dimensional. What does this thing actually look like? Don't forget that that lone pair pushes and repels the other hydrogens down and we get this shape trigonal pyramidal. Uh, and we see that no, it is not. It is not in fact symmetrical, nope. And so it will act like a polar covalent substance. It will dissolve in water. It will dissolve in polar alcohol.